Hello everyone, welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. This video is continuing on Chapter 2. In particular, we're going to talk about forward flight. We talked about the basics, we talked about hovering in previous videos, and now we're ready to move on to forward flight. Okay, so how does that work? Well, when it comes to forward flight, now you have a slightly different situation. So what's happening is as you go forward, now you have your different velocities. You know, how did we get there? First of all, we got there by pushing forward, tilting the disc. And again, this is highly exaggerated so that my upward thrust is tilted forward that causes me to go forward this thrust opposes the drag to stabilize me very quickly at a certain speed and one of the problems of forward flight is dissymmetry of lift so dissymmetry of lift is something you definitely need to understand as a helicopter pilot it is something that is going to be highly tested. So when it comes to your knowledge test, they're going to ask you about it. When it comes to your oral exam, you can bet they are going to ask you about it. Most definitely. So how does all of that work? Well, if I'm going forward at 120 knots, then I'm going to have different air speeds over my rotor in different points of rotation. So here at point A, I'm going to have 120 knots of airspeed plus let's say 480 knots of rotational velocity, which really means I have 600 knots of wind here on the advancing blade. Now if I look at point C, with the retreating blade, now I have 480 knots of velocity, but the airspeed is flowing backwards. You know, as I go through forward in the helicopter, I have to subtract 120 knots. And now I essentially have 360 knots of wind. And remember, we said that that lift was proportional to the speed squared. So this is a problem for me. I have a lot less lift on this side than on side A, the advancing blade side. So what can happen, you can actually get what's called a retreating blade stall. That is a limiting factor on the maximum forward speed for a helicopter where you're going so fast that you can't produce any lift on this blade. So what's going to happen? Well, this is going to drop. It's going to roll to the side. Now, remember what we said about gyroscopic precession in an earlier video. We said that a force is applied and it's felt 90 degrees later in the rotation. So what's actually going to happen in the case of a retreating blade stall is that you're going to feel that loss of lift here at point D, which means that the nose is going to pitch up. So it's going to pitch up and roll to the left. And how do you avoid that? You don't go so fast, right? So, you know, you can have, if you feel like you're approaching that, you can slow down and you can also decrease the blade pitch with the collective. And here we have our power versus airspeed curve. And once again, you can see there's a minimum power point. And that minimum power point is also VY. So what is VY? VY is our maximum rate of climb speed. Airplanes also have something called VX, which is the maximum angle of climb speed. In a helicopter, that would be zero if you're going straight up. If you have enough power, go straight up then your VX is zero. Many helicopters, you can go straight up. 
Um, some of the Robinsons, especially the 22, if you have more than one person in it and more than five gallons of fuel, uh, good luck going straight up in that. But if you have a more capable helicopter, like maybe a Schweitzer or an Enstrom, it's pretty easy to go straight up, even if you have a load in the helicopter. Okay, so this is a problem. We have this dissymmetry of lift. So what are we going to do? There has to be a way to account for this. You know, we want to avoid this retreating blade stall. How do we do that? You know, we avoid the never exceed speed. That's part of it. But how can the helicopter help us out a little bit? And one of the ways that that is done is by something called blade flapping. So how does that work? This is how it works. So here at point A, I have a lot of lift. So what's going to happen to my rotor blade here? It's going to flap upward. When it flaps upward, it effectively lowers my angle of attack. Lower angle of attack means less lift. So that will reduce the amount of lift produced here. Now, if I'm here, this isn't really going to have much of an effect. I pretty much just have my rotational speed. Now here, I have a downward flap. So that downward flap results in a larger angle of attack. So this guy is going faster, which causes it to have more lift, which causes this rotor to go up, to flap upward. And at the same time, this one will flap downward, which increases the angle of attack. So this flapping is a big part of overcoming this dissymmetry of lift. So that's something important to understand. You know, again, especially going into your knowledge test. And I can virtually guarantee you, you're going to be asked about this during your oral exam for your check ride because it's an important concept to understand. Now, you can think of this as a two bladed rotor just because it's conceptually easier. It doesn't really matter though if it's a three bladed or four bladed or two bladed rotor, it, it still works the same, right? This rotor disc is allowed to flap. It's just slightly different mechanically how this happens, right? If we have a semi-rigid rotor system, which you might find say on a Robinson, then it's just going to teeter on a teetering hinge. Whereas if you have a fully articulated system, such as what you would find on an Enstrom or a Schweitzer, then it's going to flap on the flapping hinge instead. So that is being in forward flight. Now let's talk a little bit about how you get there. So how do I get there? Well, we said that I'm going to tilt the lift forward. And I'm going to go through a couple of different phases of flight. So I'm going to start out. And as, as soon as I move, even just a little bit, that rotor system gets a little bit more efficient. And that increased in efficiency is called translational lift. So what do these airflow patterns look like? As we start out, you know, if we, if we went back, we would see that the, the pattern of the airflow around an aircraft in a hover is going to be pretty turbulent, right? Now, if I start going even just a little bit, 
notice what's happening. I'm starting to get more horizontal flow and horizontal flow is good. I'm going to get a little bit of horizontal flow here on the front. So this is going to increase the efficiency of the rotor. Increase the efficiency on the front of the rotor. I'm going to feel it 90 degrees later on the left side of my helicopter and that's going to cause my helicopter to tip to the right. And that happens at one to five knots. Now, as I continue to speed up, see that the airflow becomes more and more horizontal. Now the whole front of this disc is starting to fly pretty well. In addition, I'm kind of dumping on the rear rotor disc. You know, look at all this turbulence I'm generating here. Here there was some turbulence, but here it's become much worse, right? Instead of just having turbulence out here at the tip, I've got turbulence, you know, let's say over half of this part of the rotor. So that is the next phase. So first you'll notice this thing is going to tilt to the right. Then you're going to notice that it's going to try to lift leading edge of the rotor, if you will, the front half, and that's going to cause what we call blowback. So once you're going to have that, it's going to try to push back and then you get to what you want, ETL speed. So what's ETL speed? ETL speed is effective translational lift. And it's usually between 16 to 24 knots. And what happens at that speed? Well, now you're in Nirvana land where you are completely outrunning your own turbulent wake. And everybody gets good air. I don't know, maybe you're the airflow Oprah. Everyone gets clean air, right? Um, and now your helicopter is a lot more efficient. And we'll find out later that this is an important airspeed. And we try to be above that airspeed as much as we possibly can. And there are a lot of good reasons for that. Well, let's go ahead and fly a little bit in the sim. And I'm gonna start taking off. I'll take off and I won't apply any cyclic. And you should be able to see this helicopter tip. I like to do this in, in the helicopter as well with my students, just to emphasize, hey, look, this is what happens if you don't correct. Now, the truth is most helicopter students very quickly in their training, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, and what is that? Well, you're supposed to be looking out in front of you. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you're flying, if it's an airplane or it's a helicopter or it's a gyroplane. You should be looking out in front of you most of the time, not staring at instruments, which airplane students tend to do much more so than helicopter students because, hey, we have a better view. Why would we stare inside when we can look outside and see everything? So let's go ahead and start a takeoff. Pick it up, start it forward. Did you see that little tip? Let me do it again. Lift up. First get myself straight and start going forward. Going forward. And there's my tip. I'm gonna go to my next phase and I'm just going to let the helicopter do its thing. And you're going to notice it's going to try to tip to the right. I'm going to correct for it. And then it's going to try to go nose up before I want it to. So how do I correct for that? It's pretty easy. I just push forward. I sort of push myself through it, through that translational lift. Let's see how we can do. So I'm in my hover, 
pushing forward, pushing through my translational lift and see how it's going up, 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 up. It's going really nose high, right? It's just not, not happy. Also got a little translational tendency there because I didn't account for that either. Kind of hard to do this and do it wrong, but you know, it's a little easier in the actual helicopter kind of show you the different stages. But let me try this one again. So I'm going to try to correct for the right dip, but not for the blowback. So I'm putting in a little bit of pedal. Coming forward, there's that dip. All right, and see how it's just trying to bring the nose up. I don't want that. All right, let's try to take off with a headwind this time. So I'm gonna pull it up into a hover, a little bit of left pedal. Slowly pushing forward. Pushing forward. Pushing through that blowback. And now I'll just give it a little bump of aft on the cyclic. And I'm off and climbing. Okay, so that is the forward flight section of chapter two.